Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, I'm gonna be factoring 100 different trinomials. And when I say trinomials, I'm talking about these things that look like this. They typically come in the form of this ax squared plus bx plus c. And specifically, these are going to be representing quadratics. In each of these expressions, you're gonna notice that the degree of each polynomial is going to equal two. This variable a is just representing our leading coefficient and is going to be a number. b as well is going to be a coefficient and is going to be another number, as well as a c over here, which is our constant term, and that's going to represent a third different number. Now to understand what it really means to factor, let's look at the number 20 and think of two factors that multiply to get 20. Now two factors I can think of here, maybe right off the top of my head, are just maybe 5 times 4, right? So this 5 and this four are both gonna be factors, right? There are two factors that multiply to get 20. I know there's other ones, but these are just two. And when you multiply these two factors together, you get a product, right? So 20 is gonna represent our product. Now let's apply this concept to understanding how we're factoring trinomials. So imagine you have a trinomial like x squared plus seven x plus 12, okay? And if I were to tell you that we could actually write this as the quantity of x plus three, times the quantity of x plus four, then this must mean that we have the same type of idea here. So we have this factor of x plus three, it's just a longer looking factor, and we have another factor of x plus four. So these two things are called factors, right? Now each of these factors are a binomial, so x plus three is a binomial, it has two terms, and x plus four is a binomial, it has two terms as well, but collectively x plus three is one factor, and x plus four is one factor. When you go ahead and multiply these two together, and you distribute, uh, we get this product over here, right? So we're just saying we're multiplying two things to get a larger value or just this quantity that we call the product. So throughout this video, I'm gonna take 100 different expressions that look like this and turn them into something that looks like this. Now, if you find this video helpful in any way, you can let me know in the comment section down below, like the video, and even consider subscribing. I'm gonna be using a slightly different method that not a lot of other people use, but you might find it useful for yourself. So whether you just want to sit back and relax and eat some popcorn while I factor these 100 trinomials, or you want to grab some paper and something to write with, let's do some math together. Here's problem one. We have the expression of x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now to use the strategy I'm going to be talking about, we really just need to know the leading coefficient of 1 and to start off. And the other thing we need to know is just this value of 6 or a constant term at the end. So we're going to factor the 1x squared, and so the factors of the leading coefficient is just going to be 1 and 1, right? The only way to multiply to get to 1 is just going to be 1. Now, as for the 6 on the end, we really have two factors we can consider, and that's going to be 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. Now, which one do you choose? Uh, well, that's actually just kind of dictated by the thing in the middle here, this 5. And 1 plus 6 gets you 7, but uh, 2 plus 3 gets you 5. So uh, that makes more sense that we're gonna use this two and a three, and I'll explain a little bit more in just a moment, okay? Uh, but everything's positive here, so, so this does work out. If we have negatives, I'll get into some examples with that a little bit later on, okay? Now, once you've uh, shown this, keep in mind that this does really represent one x and one x, so if you were to multiply one x by one x, you do get this one uh, x squared, and you have this two and this three here, and if you multiply them, you do get six. Okay, now the next thing to do is just to pair these up either across or diagonal, right? Now, if you pair these across, then you're saying that's one X times two, and that's going to be two X. And if you pair this one across, you're saying one times three, that's one X times three, that's three X. So you have two X plus three X, and that does indeed get you the five X we're looking for. Okay, now you don't have to go across, you can also go diagonal. So if you'd like to say this is gonna be one times three or one X times three, that's three X. And you can also say that one times two is going to be two X. Now, does it really matter right now? No, it doesn't matter because you have a one and a one here, but later on when you have different values, it does matter. Okay, so for the first 50 examples or so, it's not gonna matter, but later on it does. So we'll try to get in the right mindset of how we go about doing these, okay? so. Once again, I'm just gonna pair these up um, just to make things easier. I'm just gonna go across since it doesn't matter. Um, and why are, we, why are we setting it up this way? Well, we're gonna go ahead and just set up the two binomials. I think it's kind of nice just setting it up real quick, just like that. And when you have the one, really that's representing one X and one X, right? Uh, we don't really have to write the ones, but I'll do it for this first one. Um, and when we pair up the one and the two, well, notice the yellow line. The, the yellow line is really saying, let's pair up the outers here. 
So we're gonna say plus two, okay? So the one X paired with the plus two. And then we're also gonna say, okay, the, the purple line must be the inners. And so that's going to be a plus three. Okay, now you can totally foil this out just to make sure everything does work, but one X times one X is going to be one X squared. And then one times the two is going to be two uh, X. One X times two is two X. Three times one X is three X. Those do combine to get five X. If you remember the acronym FOIL, the uh, first outer inner last, the outers and inners should add up to get the five uh, X or the B term here, okay? And then finally three times two gets you six. So this would be the factored version uh, of this trinomial, okay? So that's number one. Let's take a look at another one. And as we go, I'll go through them a little bit quicker and just kind of go through the whole process a bunch of times, a hundred times to make sure you feel more comfortable with this strategy, okay? So you got this. I know it's a little new, just try to hang with me here. So uh, again, uh, for number two, we have one X squared plus nine X plus 20. And uh, we have one X, we're just looking at these leading coefficient and the constant at the end. Uh, to get one x squared, we really are just going to have a one and a one. That's not too bad. Now for factors of 20, we have one and 20, two and 10, five and four. Let's go with five and four since they do add up to get to nine. Here this one and five paired together mean one x times five, that's going to be five x. This is one x times four, that's gonna be four x. Adding, adding those together, we get nine uh, x. So I'm gonna open up my empty binomials, okay? We know we're looking to try to get this each time. I'm not gonna write the one x and one x this time, I'm just gonna write x and x. You know there's a uh, invisible coefficient of one, we don't need to really write it. And if we're gonna pair up the one x and the five, I'm just gonna use the same colors to keep it consistent throughout the video. This will be a plus five at the end. And using the other uh, pair that's gonna be the inners, we're gonna have a plus four, okay? Now feel free to foil it on your own just to make sure it does work. Uh, but I promise you, if the, if the trinomial is factorable, this strategy is really, really nice. Okay, uh, let's try a few more. So uh, number three, we have uh, x squared plus 15x and plus 36. Okay, uh, so we have a leading coefficient of one here, that's nice. And we have a positive 36 at the end, everything's still positive, just like the last two examples. If you wanna pause it and try it on your own, go for it, otherwise I'm just gonna go through it. Uh, we have one and one, and then for 36 we have Factors of 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, uh, 4, 9, 6 and 6. I'm going to go with 9 and, 9 and, no, actually, no, not 9 and 4. I'm going to go with 12 and 3, all right? 12 and 3, just because 12 plus 3 does equal 15. And we can say 12 plus 3 equals 15 because these are 1s. Again, this isn't going to work later on for us when the leading coefficient changes, but for now, everything's going to be super nice. So go ahead and pairing these up create my empty binomials. And now we just have four things to fill in. X and X, that takes care of two of them. Don't have to worry about that. And then the yellow line is saying the outers. Again, it doesn't matter if you say the outers or the inners, but I'm gonna say the outers to be consistent throughout this video. And then the inners are going to be my purple line uh, throughout each problem. And so I'm gonna put a plus three. Okay, that is the factored form of this trinomial. Uh, let's move on to number four. Number four, we have x squared and then plus seven x and then plus 12, okay? So again, we have a leading coefficient of one, so that's gonna be nice and easy. We have a positive 12 and a positive seven in the middle, so that's kind of nice as well. One and one, that's gonna be the name of the game for all of these initial problems. And then for 12, we have one and 12, two and six, three and four. I think three and four make the most sense because they add to get to seven. These will be our outers. These will be our inners and going ahead and setting up our empty parentheses, right? We're going to put the X's where they belong right in the front. And let's see here, we can go ahead and say the outers are going to be plus three, X plus three. And then the inners over here are going to be um, X plus four. So plus three plus four. Okay. Alrighty, so let's move on. So those are four problems down, 96 to go. Uh, here is number five. So number five, we're gonna have uh, x squared plus eight x plus 15. So we have a leading coefficient of one. So there's that right there. And we also have this positive 15. I'm uh, gonna put a one and a one. For 15, I'm thinking five and three. So five and three and these will be my outers and these will be my inners, okay? So I'll set up my empty 
parentheses just like this. And I'm going to put this x and this x uh, where they belong. And this positive 5 I'm going to put at the end. And that's going to be our outers or the yellow line that I just kind of showed. And then we're going to pair up this x with this plus 3. And there you go. We factored it. Okay. Uh, moving on to number 6. Number 6, I'm going to have maybe x squared plus 11x plus 18. Okay, so you have a leading coefficient of 1, and we have this 18 at the end, positive 18. So I'm going to go with a 1 and a 1 over here, and I'm going to pick 9 and 2. I think that makes the most sense. Pairing these up, these will be our outers, these will be our inners, and going ahead and creating my empty binomials. I'm going to say we'll have x and x. And I'm going to have a plus 9 over here at the end and a plus 2 right over here. Okay, These are the outers as shown and the inners. All right, Let's try number 7. I think that is what we're on. 7, I'm going to say we have x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, uh, We have a leading coefficient of 1. Put that right here. And we have a 1 over here. And so I'll put a 1 and a 1. And this one's actually not too bad at all. So this is, has to be a 1 and a 1. We don't have a choice. These will be our outers and the inners. And this one's actually going to be interesting. This brings us to a point later on we can make, and I can make another video on, uh, with just having uh, this thing of two of the same binomials. It's called a perfect square trinomial because you're multiplying something by itself. So it's a square. Okay. So our outers here, right over there, and our inners, I guess it doesn't matter because they're the same, but there are two identical binomials. Okay, uh, here is number eight. So feel free to pause the video whenever you need to. If I'm going a little too fast, or you need to uh, just take a pause every once in a while, uh, go at your own pace. That's that's what's kind of nice about these types of videos, uh, these types of lessons. So if you find like it's useful, uh, definitely definitely go ahead and pause it. If I'm going too fast, or you just need a break, or you need to think about something. Okay. Um, so we have 1 and 1, and let's see. We had 36 earlier, but uh, I think we did 12 and 3. I think we're going to do 9 and 4. Yeah, 9 and 4. And we'll go with the outers, and we'll go with the inners. Not too bad. Get into a little bit of groove here, hopefully. If not, please just hang with me here. It'll get better, I promise. We'll put x and x here, uh, and then I'll put the plus 9 and the plus 4. Okay, these were the outers, pairing those up, and the inners are paired on the inside. Okay, try to just make sure you're not pairing them in the same binomial. You're pairing outers and inners because they'll actually multiply by each other. Okay, so there are the first eight, and uh, let's move on. Let's see, get rid of that. All right, so number nine, we have x squared plus 17x plus 72. Okay, so we have a leading coefficient of 1, that is going to be right there, and we have a positive 72, and I'm going to put a 1 and a 1, and factors of 72, hmm, I'm going to go with 9 and 8, right? 9 times 8 is 72, but 9 plus 8 is 17, I like that, not too bad, and I'm just going to open up my empty parentheses just like this, and I'm going to put an x and x, and let's go ahead and put the plus 9 and plus 8. Here are my outers. And here are my inners, and we're good to go. Okay, um, here's number ten. Number ten, we have x squared plus sixteen x, and then plus sixty-three. Okay, so we have a leading coefficient of one, and we have sixty-three, and we're gonna have a one and a one. And for sixty-three, let's see, we have one and sixty-three. We can do three and twenty-one. Uh, 9 and 7. I think 9 and 7 makes the most sense here. 9 and 7. Outers. Inners. Open the empty parentheses. I just like kind of having them there. Fill in the four spots. Those go right there. This goes over here. And we have a plus 7. Outers are located here. And inners are located here. 
So there's our first 10 problems. And hopefully you notice that in all of them, everything was positive, okay? Uh, moving forward with number 11, you're gonna see something slightly different, okay? So I uh, try to group these by types so you can see patterns. And once you see the patterns, then you can just kind of apply them as you go. So for number 11, I'm gonna have x squared minus 7x plus 12. Okay, so the first thing that's different here is the fact that we have a negative B term or negative uh, middle coefficient or negative value. So what that means is, is that the two things we add up have to be negative because a negative plus a negative is a negative. Now, why do they both have to be negative? Well, those two numbers still have to multiply to get this positive 12 at the end. So to multiply to get to a positive value, you do have to have two positives or two negatives. Um, if they're two positives, they're going to add to get a positive, but if they're two negatives, they're going to add to get a negative, okay? So uh, I'm going to put a 1 just to show, and I'm going to have this positive 12 at the end. I'm going to have this 1 and 1. Now, I can't pick two positive values. I have to pick two negative values. So I'm going to pick negative 4 and negative 3, right? So if we were to pair these up, 1x times negative 4 is going to be negative 4x, and then 1 times negative 3, or 1x times negative 3, is going to be negative 3x. And adding those together, negative 3x, negative 4x, we do get negative 7x. Okay, so uh, again, if this new idea is a little bit more you know, confusing in any way, uh, feel free to just pause the video and think about it, or just replay it. Um, but similar to the first 10 problems, uh, we have two negatives now instead of two positives. So there are our outers, and there are the inners. Okay? That's number 11. Let's try another one, another similar one. So for number 12, I'm going to have x squared minus 9x and then plus 14. Okay, so I'm going to put the 1. That goes there. Positive 14, 1 and 1. Let's see, this is going to be two negative numbers. Well, 7 and 2 make 14, so we want a negative 7 and a negative 2. So pairing these up, that's negative 7x. And pairing these up, that's going to be negative 2x. Okay. Um, filling in these empty parentheses, we know we're going to have a 1x and a 1x. And we're going to have a negative 7 and a negative 2. So these were our outers, and these were the inners. Okay. Those are the first 12. Let's keep on rolling. So number 12, we'll go on to number 13 now. All right. So number 13. We have x squared minus 4x, and I'll say plus 3, okay? So uh, we have a 1, and we have a positive 3. So we have a 1 and a 1, and a negative 3 and a negative 1. So those multiply to get to positive 3. However, uh, they add to get to negative 4. So those will pair. Those will pair. And we'll go ahead and put these open parentheses. I'll put an x and an x here, and I will put a minus 3 and a minus 1. And so these were the outers, and these were the inners. Okay, So hopefully you're getting the hang of this, and you're seeing the pattern, being very consistent with how I'm writing things. Hopefully it's uh, clear enough. So for number 14, I'm going to say we have x squared minus 14x, and then plus 33. Okay, So we have a 1. Start off with that, and then positive 33. I'm going to put a 1 and a 1. And for the positive 33, I think I'm going to go with negative 11 and negative 3. Those do multiply to get to positive. And then we can pair this up and say those are the outers and the inners. So opening up these binomials and then plugging in our x's in the beginning. And then we can say minus 11 on the outers and minus 3 on the inners. And there we have it. Okay. So there we have number 14. Let's go on to number 15, do some similar ones. Uh, number 15, I'm going to go with x squared minus 5x and then plus 4. Okay, so we have a 1 and we have a positive 4. I'm going to go ahead and write a 1 and a 1. And for this, we have 2 and 2 and 4 and 1. I think negative 4, negative 1. Okay, and go across and across. If you want to mix it up and go diagonal, I mean, be my guest. You can do, you do you, you know. So we go ahead and open up these parentheses. I'll put an x and an x, and then I'll go ahead and put a minus 4 and a minus 1. This checks out as negative 4x, and this checks out as negative 1x. Those make negative 5x. Okay. Number 16, 
we let's let's do x squared and then minus 10x plus 16. Okay, so I'm going to put a one. That's right over here, and we have a positive 16. So one and one right away, and 16. Thinking hmm, two and eight. I think two and eight. So minus two minus eight. These will pair across and across. Open the parentheses. X's have to go here. Outer and inner. I'm just showing you visually, that's the pair of the outer and the pair of the inner. Okay, so there is 13, 14, 15, and 16. Let's keep on going. On to 17. 17, what do we got here? We have, let's do x squared and then minus 8x and plus 7. So put a 1. And I'm just going to start by putting the 1 and the 1 right away. And then for the positive 7, I'm going to do a negative 7 and a negative 1. Okay, uh, That makes negative 7x. This makes negative 1x. And that pairs and adds together to get negative 8x. Go ahead and open these up. I'm going to put x and x in the beginning. And then we'll put a minus 7 and a minus 1. These do indeed pair on the outside, and these pair on the inside. Okay. Number 18, let's try x squared minus 15x, but then we'll put a plus 50 at the end. There's a 1, so we'll have a 1 and a 1 of a positive 50, and we need a negative 15, so I'm thinking negative 10 and negative 5. That sounds about right. These compare, these compare as well. Opening up the parentheses, we can go ahead and put the 1x and 1x in the front, and then we will fill in the negative 10 and negative 5. Okay, These pair and these pair. 19. Let's see. x squared minus 11x plus 28. Okay, So 1, that's going to be a 1 and a 1. Hmm. 28, I'm thinking 7 and 4, right? Negative 7, negative 4. And pairing these, those go together, those go together. And I think that's all we need. We just got to fill in the pieces, right? So x and x, negative 7, negative 4. Everything checks out, right? These go here, these go here. You don't have to worry about the first and the last just because you clearly chose those numbers so that those would multiply correctly. So no need to actually check that part unless you chose the wrong numbers, then you definitely have a problem. But otherwise you should be good. So we have x squared minus 12x and then plus 32. Okay, so I'm gonna put a one right in the beginning. That's a one and a one. And for the plus 32, let's go with negative 8 and negative 4. And that makes negative 8. That makes negative 4. OK, so go ahead and set these up. x and x minus 8 minus 4. That's the negative 8x. And this is the negative 4x. Cool. So those are the first 20. OK, let's move on. Uh, first 20. And I think after starting on 21, I think I'm going to start throwing in some more negatives here. So let's uh, be on the lookout for that on this next one. There's going to be a slight difference on 21. Okay, so for 21, let's see, I'm going to put x squared minus 5x. We have a negative b term, but I'm also going to make a negative c term. So this is the first problem where we have a negative c term. So again, uh, I'm going to put the 1 in the front, so that's 1 and 1 and then under the negative 36. So this is where things get a little bit more tricky. Uh, to get a negative 36, keep in mind that you have to have one negative and one positive value. So, but when you add a negative and a positive, it kind of depends on what you're going to get there, right? So we're gonna have to find, find two numbers that multiply to get to 36, but not really add to get to this middle number of negative five. Rather, it's kind of like subtracting their absolute values. So let me tell you what I mean by that. So uh, when I go ahead and choose numbers for this one, uh, the numbers I'm actually going to choose have to be five apart from each other if you ignore their negatives. So I'm thinking nine and four, right? Because nine and four are five apart. 
Now, which one gets to be negative? Well, we need to get to a negative five, which is our middle value here. So we need to put the negative on the nine, right? If you put the negative on the nine, see what happens here. Okay, I'm just gonna give you some proof by doing it instead of explaining it. It's a little bit more, you know, easy to see, I think, I think once I, I show you and demonstrate. So why, why did we pair these up this way? And they don't, you know, nine plus four clearly doesn't add to get to negative five, but negative nine plus four does, okay? So opening up these parentheses, let's see how this works out. We have x and x, that's the same as before, but we're gonna put a negative nine and a positive four on the inside. So nothing's really changing besides the fact that we're not adding two positives or two negatives, we're adding a positive and a negative. So negative nine x plus negative four x, negative five x, and this does work out, okay? So slight difference from before. So if you uh, kinda were getting in the groove of things, this might have uh, thrown you off just a little bit, but hopefully after a few more, I'm gonna do a bunch more of these right now, you'll feel more comfortable as we go. Okay, so going ahead, we'll put a one, that's one and one, that's the same as before. Now for negative 40, well, let's think here, they have to be three apart, so eight and five seem to make the most sense. So I don't like putting the signs on, I just put the numbers first. And since this value is negative, the one that has a greater absolute value is gonna be the one that gets the negative sign, because it's gotta pull it into the negatives, okay? so. Uh, let's go ahead and pair these up and go ahead and open these, fill in two of them, always easy, then fill in the third one. Once you fill in the third one, the last one has only one place to go. There's that, and there's that. I think everything checks out, okay? 23. 23, what do we have? Uh, let's try x squared and then minus 4x and then minus 21. Okay, so I'm gonna put a one out in front and that's gonna be one and one. And then for the negative 21, let's do seven and three because those are four apart, but I'm gonna give the larger number a negative value, okay? Those make negative seven x, this makes positive three, negative seven x plus positive three x gets you negative four x. So let's go ahead and open these up x and x, and let's do minus seven and plus three. These were the outers that paired nicely, and these were the inners, so that looks good. 24. 24, let's go with um, x squared minus seven x minus 30. Okay, so I'm gonna put a one, that's a one and a one. Hmm. Two numbers that are seven apart that multiply to get to negative 30, I think 10 and three, right? Those are seven away from each other. And it's a negative seven X, so we'll give the negative to the 10, okay? This will be going across, and this will be going across. Two binomials, go ahead with an X and an X. Again, we've, we've done every single one with an X and X in the beginning, so hopefully that feels a little more comfortable and go ahead and fill in the rest of the numbers. That's negative 10x and positive 3x. Those are the only ones you really have to check. As long as those check out, everything else should be good. Okay, so there are 21 to 24. Let's keep it going to 25. What do we got for 25? Let's try x squared and then minus 9x and then minus 22. Okay, so I'll put a one, that's gonna be a one and a one, and then for negative 22, let's go with 11 and two. Those are nine apart from each other. We'll give the negative to the larger value, and I think we have everything we need, right? So hopefully you're finding this way easier or a little bit more uh, efficient than maybe some of the other methods for factoring, but I find this to be the quickest way for me to do it um, and efficient way as well. So uh, I don't really have a lot of extra writing to do. Later on, you're gonna notice, yes, there's a little bit more thinking, but uh, you know, it's it's the good, you know, really quick way of going about um, solving each of these or factoring, uh, which is gonna be super helpful in Algebra 1 and in Algebra 2 and, and beyond. There's just a lot of factoring that you'll have to do uh, throughout your math classes, so. Not something you really wanna to waste too much time on. It's kind of like uh, multiplication facts. And it's like once you kind of get those down, hopefully 
you don't have to think about them as much. Then you can focus on the other stuff. Um, 33, 11 and, 11 and 3, right? 11 and 3. Put the negative here. Pair and pair. Kind of get in the groove of these. They get kind of nice and easy once you get the hang of it. Minus 11 plus 3. And if you're having trouble with getting factors, I think uh, you can always you know, make a factor tree or you can use a calculator, that's fine. I think the goal here is just to make sure you can get the factors and then understand how to where to put them and then things get a little bit easier. So um, 27 x squared, let's yeah, let's do x squared minus 10 x and then minus 56. So I'll put a one here in front, I'll put a one and a one and for this negative 56, I have to be 10 numbers apart. So let's see here, um, one and 56, uh, two and 28, three is not divisible, four. four. Four goes into this 14 times. So 14 and four. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't know it was divisible by four, if you can take a number and divide it in half, and if you can do that again, like if you have another even number, then it's always divisible by four. So Half of 56 is 28, and you can take half of 28, which is 14. So if you can take half of a number twice, it's divisible by 4, which makes sense because 2 times 2 is 4. It's, it's prime factorization. So go ahead and put these here. x and x minus 14 plus 4. And... That works out nicely with that and add them together. It's good. All right, 28. 28, we have x squared minus x and then minus 42. Okay, so there's a one. We'll put a one and a one. Negative 42, let's go with, they have to be one away from each other. Sometimes this gives people trouble, but six and seven, right? Um, you can write seven and six or six and seven. I just noticed I put all the larger ones on top earlier, but it um, doesn't really matter. Maybe I'll mix it up just to see. You can see that it does work out no matter what. Dun, dun, dun. Put the X and the X and the plus six and the minus seven. Sorry if it's bothering anybody with the inconsistency, but it's okay. I'll get over it. We'll get over it. <laughs> Uh, so positive six, negative seven. Yeah, that's good. Okay, first 28 problems done. Let's keep on going. Uh, hopefully, uh, if you need to pause, take a break. Uh, I'm gonna keep on going here. I'll see how long I can go uh, before I get tired and need to take a break myself. I think, I think I'm gonna be able to make it all the way through these 100 problems uh, in one go. So 29, we'll go x squared minus 15x minus 100. Okay, so I'll put a one, that's a one and a one for negative 100. Let's go with, huh, 20, 20 and five. 20 and five, those are 15 apart, right? Negative 20 and positive five. So that's gonna be negative 20x. It's gonna be positive five x. That does combine to make negative 15 x. Okay, so we'll go ahead and pair these x and x minus 20 and plus 5. So looking at that, it's like, okay, that's good. That's good. Everything else is good. Good, good, good. <laughs> All right, 30. Let's try x squared minus 8x and then minus 48. Let's see. If you want to try these on your own, feel free to pause it each time before I do it, and you can do them on your own if you'd like to try them. If not, it's okay. You know, we can just do them together. Um, 48, 1 and 48, 2 and 24, 3 and 16, 4 and 12. Those are 8 apart. 4 and 12. Put that bigger one on the bottom again. Um, negative 12, positive 4, that's negative 8. Yep. Okay, so these will pair, and these will pair nicely and let's go ahead with an x and an x and a plus 4 and the minus 12. that's the plus 4 that's the minus 12. cool everything's good to go um let's try 31. okay 
let's say we have a positive b term now. Okay, so let's do x squared plus 7x minus 30. Okay, so again, switching it up one more time, you can notice every 10 problems or so, I'm, uh, I'm switching things up just a bit, just to see if you can see the different patterns, uh, and that way you can adjust and adjust your mind to how, how you have to handle these things. So, um, hmm, 30, let's go with, um, we have a negative 30, so it's gotta be one positive, one negative. They have to be seven apart. So let's go with seven, uh, 10 and three, which are seven apart. And we need a positive seven X. So actually the smaller number, the number with the smaller absolute value is gonna get the negative now. So slight difference from before, but we wanna get a positive B value. So that's why we're doing that, okay? So we'll have X and X, and then we'll put a plus 10, and we'll put a minus three, and we can see here that is the positive 10, and here is the negative three, and everything does work out. Okay, 32. Let's give it a go. 32, let's have x squared plus 8x minus 84. All right, you got this. Let's do this. So we know we have a one here, so we'll put a one and one right away. Now 84, okay, that's a little bit bigger of a number. Uh, we need to think of two numbers that multiply to get 84 that are eight apart. Now, hmm, not too sure actually on this one. So what kind of strategies do I have? Because I think like one and 84, that's no good. Two and 42, it's also no good. Uh, four and 21, hmm. Okay, so if you're ever super stuck, right? So I can show you, uh, what, what do you do in a situation like this? Well. We can take the 84, and I'll, I'll erase this in just a moment, but we'll take 84, and let's do a factor tree. So we have two and 42, and we can do two and 21, and we can do three and seven. So we have our prime factorization, right? We can, we can basically break this down into saying, okay, we have a two and a two and a three and a seven, and any pair of these can get us another factor of 84. So if we were to pair like this four, the two and two to make four, so then if that's four, then three and seven make 21, but that's not what we're looking for. So we need to find two factors that are eight apart. So let's take a look at this. Let's try two and seven. So two and seven make 14, and then two and three make six. So six and 14 are eight apart. So that's what we're looking for. So it turns out that 14 times six is 84. So getting rid of this, we can go ahead and say we have 14 and six, okay? The six is gonna be negative because we're looking for a positive value here. So this is gonna be positive 14, negative six, those combine to make positive eight, okay? So go ahead and open these up, plop those X's right in there, negative, oops, positive 14 and negative six. These were the ones that paired, just double checking, that's positive 14 X and take away a 6x, that's still positive 8x, okay? Everything does check out. Lovely, okay, that's 32. Let's move on to 33. So 33, we have x squared plus 5x minus 14, okay? So I'll put a one here, I'll put a one and a one. For negative 14, I'm thinking seven and two. Those are five apart. Uh, to get a positive five though, we are going to take away two from the seven. These pair, these pair. Opening up our parentheses, our X's are gonna go first. And then we'll put a positive seven and a negative two. If you ever wanna flop the inners and the outers and make the outers the inners and the inners the outers, because you just wanna mix it up and have some fun, <laughs> go for it. Just kidding, but whatever, whatever helps you, <laughs> whatever helps you be successful with these is perfectly fine. 34, we have x squared plus 4x minus 60. Put a one, one and one. What about for negative 60? Hmm. Oh, that's actually not that bad. Let's do six and 10. Six and 10 are four apart. Uh, the six needs to be negative though, so that we add to get a positive four. So that's negative six x positive 10 X, 10 minus six is four. Woot woot, that works out. So let's put an X here and an X minus six plus 10. Just 
Let's check one more time. That's negative 6 and positive 10. That makes positive 4. Cool. 35. 35. Let's see. We have, uh, let's try x squared and then plus x and then minus 20. So put a 1. That's a 1 and a 1. For negative 20, they have to be one apart. Again, there's an invisible one right here. So that's, we're looking for one apart. Let's go five and four, right? Five and four, but we want a positive one. So we'll, we'll throw the negative onto the four. That's gonna be five X. That's gonna be negative four X. I think we are good. X and X plus five minus four. That paired fine and that paired fine. Cool, 36. Okay, let's do x squared plus 6x. And after that, let's do minus 27. Okay, so I'll put a one and a one and a one. And for negative 27, let's think nine and three. I like nine and three. And let's throw the negative on the three. So we'll do nine minus three does get you six or nine plus negative three. Add the opposite, right? Or keep change, change, keep change, flip. Kentucky chicken fried. You wouldn't really understand that unless you were in my math class. Let's see, plus nine minus three. Yep. That's a positive nine. That's a minus three. Yep, everything works out, cool. I uh, just like double checking, making sure everything does mathematically it uh, accurately <laughs> comes out. So uh, let's go with 37, 37. And if you don't wanna look at these all in one go, you know, that's totally okay. You may get tired after a while, unless you're like on the edge of your seat and you're like, this is so exciting. Minus 24, let's put a one, one and one. And for negative 24, I'm thinking, hmm, oh, 12 and two, there we go, 12 and two. I was thinking six and four and I got excited for 10, but I forgot one has to be negative, one has to be positive, so uh, that's no good. So we'll go with 12 and two. Again, they subtract to get to 10, or you add their actual values, but one's negative. So it's the same thing as subtracting. So let's go with x and x plus 12 minus two. These do pair and these do pair. Move on to 38. 38, let's try x squared plus 12x minus 45. Okay, so we have a one, hasn't changed yet at all. We'll do that on the second 50 problems where it changes. So if you wanna skip ahead and look at the second 50 problems, uh, you can go ahead and do so. Uh, I'm thinking, hmm. 12 apart, they have to be pretty far away from each other. Let's go with 15 and three. 15 times three is 45, right? And we'll make the negative on the three. So that's gonna be positive 15 minus three. So that was technically the hard part, right? And we'll just fill in things in the correct location. So X and X, same old, same old, plus 15 minus three and outers and inners. If you're making sense of this, if this is you know good for you and your understanding, then uh, awesome. That's it's really really good. I'm proud of you. Good job. Uh, this is a little bit tricky, you know. Um, but if you like this method, I hope you continue using it and share it with other people. Um, again, I haven't really seen any other person kind of go about it doing doing it this way. But whenever I show people this, they seem to like it. Uh, a lot of students think it's easier than the box method and other other types of methods that they might have learned in school. Um, but if it works for you, great. Here to help. Uh, 55, let's think 11 and five. 11 times five is 55. That's my first, <laughs> any two repeated two digit numbers. That's what I think of 11 and five. And I need a negative on the five, right? We need a positive six. So positive 11 minus five gets you positive six. So going ahead and setting these up, X and X go here, positive 11, negative five, and I like just double checking one last time to make sure I don't make any mistakes. That works, 11 minus five is equal to six. Beautiful. 40, still going strong. Let's try x squared plus nine x 
minus 36. Leading coefficient is 1, and negative 36 is our constant. Thinking 12 and 3, those are 9 apart, 12 and 3, but the negative on the 3. Let's go positive 12 minus 3, that's going to be positive 9. So that does work. Just put the stuff in the right spot now, okay? You did all the hard work. Now you just have to stick them in the right locations so that everything foils out nicely. The first will work, the last will work. Just check on the inners and they work. Cool, so 40 down. Let's do 10 more where I'll do a little bit of everything. Uh, so the first 40 were kind of in a specific pattern of 10 of each type. Now for the last 10 here, I'm gonna just mix it up. And if you want to, I, think, I really encourage you at this point to kind of pause and try each of these on your own because uh, I'm just going to mix up all the signs in each of these, uh, no, no particular pattern. And if you want to give them a go and practice, be my guest. Let's do it together. A little less lonely that way, right? Um, hmm. 11 and 4. Negative 11 to get the negative 7. This will be negative 11x plus 4x gets us negative 7x. And let's open up some parentheses. Let's say x and x minus 11 plus 4. That's good. And that's good. Cool. 42. Let's try x squared plus 6x plus 5. So 1. We'll put a 1 and a 1. Everything's positive here. I like that. 5's prime, so that makes it actually really easy. I like prime numbers. You should like prime numbers too, because then you have less factors to think about. Okay, uh, go here and here, open those up. x and x, plus 5, plus 1. Look at that, flying through. If I'm going too fast, I apologize. Can't, can, uh, feel free to pause. Uh, pause whenever if you, if you feel like I'm going too quickly. 43x squared minus 13x minus 30. Okay, so 1 and 1. Let's see. We need a negative and a positive. And they have to be 13 apart. I think 15 and 2, right? 15 and 2. Negative 15, positive 2. That's going to be negative 15x. That's going to be positive 2x. And those combine to make what we are looking for. So let's go ahead and put x and x, minus 15 and plus two. Go ahead here and here, and we're good. Everything works. Everything is awesome. We have 444, we have x squared plus five x minus 24, okay? Leading coefficient of 1, excuse me, and let's see, for 24 to negative 24, they have to subtract 5 apart. Let's go with 8 and 3, positive 5, meaning the 8 gets to be positive, the 3 must be negative. Those pair, those pair, good to go. x and x plus 8 minus 3. That's good, and that's good. Cool, so those are you know 41 to 44. Let's keep going, almost halfway done. 44, let's go with 45. Just saying that to keep myself organized here. So 45, let's try x squared minus 16x and plus 39. So I'll put a one. Put a 1 and a 1, plus 39. Well, we need two negatives because the 16 is negative. Okay, so 13 and 3 do add to get 16, but they both have to be negative. Okay, uh, that's going to pair across and pair across. And we can go ahead and open up these parentheses and put x's in the beginning and put the negative 13 and the negative 3 at the ends. These do make negative 13x negative 3x, that makes negative 16x. All right, number 46. So for 46, we have x squared 
minus 7x minus 78. Okay, so leading coefficient of 1, 1 and 1, negative 78. Uh, that's a bigger number, so it's divisible by 2. That'll be 35 plus 4 is 39. Okay, this is another one where like I'd probably just make a tree just because uh, it's hard to keep track of all the numbers. So I know it's divisible by two because it ends in an even number. Half of 70 is 35, all right? Half of eight is four, 35 plus four is 39. And 39 is divisible by three, so that's three times 13. So we have a two, a three, and a 13. So I think what I'm uh, going with here is two times three gets you six, and then six times 13 is 78. Six and 13 are seven apart, so I think six times 13 is what we're looking for here, okay? Six and 13, yep, six and 13. So I'll go with a six and a 13. Those are seven apart. I need the 13 to be negative because we have a negative seven X, not a positive seven X, so go ahead and pair those up. And going ahead and factoring, we have everything we need that's there and put the, the little constants over here and see that this is indeed positive six and negative 13 and a positive six and negative 13 do make negative seven. Moving on, number 47. For 47, we have x squared plus nine x minus 90. Okay, so we have a one, we'll put a one and a one in these locations. For negative 90, um, hmm, we need a negative and a positive. So 10 times nine, that's no good. They need to be nine apart from each other. So um, hmm, 45 times two, no. 30 times three, no. 15 and six, yeah, 15 and six. If you wanna make a tree, go for it. Uh, I'm not going to write it out right now, but you can totally give it a go. 15 and six, I need 15 to be positive and six to be negative. Let me show you why. This gets you positive 15. This gets you negative six. 15 minus six does equal nine. And 15 times six equals 90, okay? So if you wanna make a factor tree or you you had some trouble coming up with that, um, I basically just made the tree in my head. Um, I've just done it so many times, but um, not to like, you know, flex, but it just, I, I've done so many of them that it gets easier over time. Okay. It just takes practice. It's not, it's not inherent that I just know it. I just, I've, I've done it a lot. It takes, takes a lot of time, but uh, at this point it's, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit easier for me. So for 47, we have the quantity of X minus six times the quantity of X plus 15. Okay. Uh, 48, 48. Let's go with X squared and then minus 13 X and then minus 68. Okay, so I'll put a one. And for 68, um, again, I'm thinking so for 34, 34 divided by two is 17. Uh, 17 and four, 17. Feel free to make a tree if you need to, but this will be negative 17 and positive four. That does get you negative 13. So. Uh, I know that one's you know definitely not as common knowledge um, as some of the other ones, but uh, feel free to try to do it mentally or use a calculator or use whatever you need to. That's not the point. The point is like learning how to factor here. And so uh, if that's kind of a barrier, use use uh, you know use a calculator, use whatever resources you need to to get the factors. But then see if you can create the binomials just like this. Okay. So there's 45 to 48. We have two more before everything changes. Okay. So 48, let's go with 49. 49, let's try x squared plus 14x plus 48. Okay, so I'll put a one here, so that's one and one. And then for positive 48, positive 14, that's nice. Uh, let's go with eight and six. Everything's positive. This is back like the good old days in the first 10 problems where everything was nice and positive you had a lot less things to think about. So always happy when I see that. And you're gonna see once we get to the second 50 problems, you're gonna miss these ones where the, the x squared always had a coefficient of one because once it's changing, uh, you have to do a little bit more thinking. So um, 
enjoy this while you can for one more problem. Okay, so for 50, last problem, we have x squared minus 12x minus 108. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put the one here, put one and one, and then we'll go with a negative 108. Huh, a negative and a positive have to be 12 numbers apart. Um, 12 times nine is 108, but they're only three apart from each other. Three and 36, those are too far apart. Or, okay, actually this one I'm not able to do in my head as quickly. I'd rather just try to write it out. And that's what I encourage you to do is try to do it in your head. And if you can't, uh, or it's taking too long, right? Then sometimes it's just easier to write it out. So let's go with that. And then we'll go with maybe a nine and a three. I could break this down, but let me see if I can avoid doing that. 18, ah, yes. I don't have to break it down anymore because look, this is 18, right? 18 and six, 18 times six is 108. Cool, 18 and six, those are also 12 apart, so that works out for us, okay? So again, faster if you just write it out sometimes. 18 and six, I did not know off the top of my head that was 108, but 18 and six is what we're gonna go with here. I'll put a negative on the 18. That's gonna get us uh, negative 18x negative and positive six x, that adds to get to negative 12x. 18 times six is 108, so fun fact. Maybe I'll remember that in the future, but again, it just comes with practice. But sometimes just write it out is the easier way or faster way to go about it. And that's the first 50 problems. Um, that's where the A value or the leading coefficient is one, right? So if that's the case, it didn't really matter how you paired up your outers and your inners, uh, but hopefully you're in the right habit now as we, as we venture into the second 50 problems where A is not gonna equal one. Now, just because A isn't equal to one, it doesn't mean that the process is gonna change. It just means that we might not get it on the first try. So we might need to do it a couple times, okay? Uh, e either way, I still think this is the faster way or the faster strategy than a lot of the other ones. It's definitely a lot less writing, uh, but let's go ahead and try 51. Um, you'll see what I'm talking about now with, with you can go and crisscross uh, as we do a few more examples. I know we went across for all of them recently, but uh, you'll see as we go through them. So now we have a five, right? So for five, that's prime. So we have a five and a one, okay? so five and one, uh, and for 12, again, we're going back to everything being positive to, to build up again. And so you can't just think of two numbers that multiply to 12 and add to get 19. Like you're never gonna find two values that do it. And it, the reason being is uh, that it, that's not what you're trying to do anyway. It's the, the five now plays a role. Before they were just ones everywhere, right? But now we have a five, so that plays a factor. So for 12, you really have two op a few options here. What, one and 12, two and six, three and four. And I recommend trying to choose maybe the values that are closer together first. Uh, I've just noticed that's a lot more common. So three and four, okay? so. If we go, I don't know, across, you see that's three times five, it's 15, and then one times four is four. 15 plus four does get you 19, which is what we're looking for here. So I uh, actually got it right on my first try. Uh, if you chose other numbers, it's, it's not going to work. Um, so this is what we're gonna go with. Um, first try, that, that's kind of nice, but again, it's, it's, you, sometimes if you choose the numbers that don't work, it's, it's really quick to do it. So you can just go ahead and just try two new numbers. Okay, um, once you get more and more composite numbers, you can see this gets a little bit more annoying, but um, it's still quite a quick way to go about this. Now, if before you got in the habit of just saying, you know, things go wherever you want, they, they can't go wherever you want anymore because the, the, it really does matter how you're pairing these up, right? The five X must pair with the positive three on the outside, and then the four must pair with the one X. So 15 and four make 19. It's really important that you do place these on the outers and the inners, okay? So prior in, in all the first 50 problems, it didn't matter uh, if, you, if you flip them by accident. And if you got in that habit, that's fine. Uh, just notice you can only do that when A is equal to one. But now that A is equal to five and you have five and one, you, you have to make sure that you pair them up appropriately. Okay, don't run into that bad habit because uh, it's, also, it's not going to work. Okay, so let's try 52. 
let's do 2x squared. Again, starting off pretty nice, right? Two is another prime number, so you don't have a lot to really have to work with. I'll put another prime number at the end here. So let's go with a two and we'll put two and one. And for this two, well, we really just have, it's a prime number, so two and one. Now, if we go across here, um, you're gonna get four and one. So I, I typically, when I do this, I'll do it in my head before I draw the lines and I don't draw them unless I know they're going to work. So I try to like kind of crisscross in my head and then straight across in my head. And whichever one works, I go with that one. So. This does happen to work. Uh, if you go across, that's four. And if you go across, that's one. Four plus one does get you five. So that's the outers and that's the inners. Okay, so that's the first two problems where A is not equal to one. It takes a little bit more thought. Please don't get stuck into the habit of thinking, okay, how do you get a, like, how do you come up with two numbers that multiply to get to 12, to add to get to 19? It doesn't, it doesn't work anymore, right? Like the first 50 problems. And it's because uh, the a value plays a role. So if you're looking for for looking for that, it's, it, you're not going to find it. So try to try to adjust your mind just a bit. You got spoiled with the ones earlier. Uh, just try to adjust and realize that's not always going to be one. Fifty three. Fifty three. Okay. Um, let's go with two x squared plus eleven x plus five. Again, try to appreciate the things uh, that, that you can kind of see the patterns here that we're giving, I'm giving you prime numbers again. So I'm trying to start off not too bad. And so if you have these prime numbers, do appreciate that these are your friends, right? These are, they, they can be much worse later on when they're not prime because you have a lot more combinations to consider, okay? At least for this strategy. So uh, I think I've paired these up correctly, right? Two times five is going to be 10. One times one is one. 10 plus one is equal to 11. So. Uh, I'll go with a, whoops, I'll put a 2x and an x, and the 2x has to pair with the 5, and the 1x has to pair with the 1. So that's going to be our 10x, that's going to be our 1x, that makes 11x. 54, 54, we have, let's go with 7x squared, again, another prime number, we like that, plus 53x and then plus 28, not a prime number. We do not like that, okay? So, um, okay, well, this doesn't give us any options. This is, has to be a seven and a one, okay? That makes our life easier. What doesn't make our life easier is that this is composite. So let's see, I guess we could start with seven and four. I did say earlier, maybe start with the numbers closer to each other. So seven and four, four and seven. Um, and let's see, if I go across here, um, that's 28, seven times four is 28, one times seven is seven. Uh, 28 plus 7 is 35, so that's no good. But if we go diagonal here, um, let's go, that's 7 times 7 is 49, and 4 times 1 is 4, 49 plus 4 is 53. Okay, so our first diagonal, okay. So again, it does. I guess it just matters where, where, you, where, where you write them, but I happen to write them this way. And so let's just get used to this so you, you are comfortable that this can happen, and it's totally okay, right? It just just how the, how the cookie crumbles. Uh, I'm going to put the 7x and the 1x, and the 7x had to pair with the positive 7, so I'll put that here, and I'll put the positive 4 here. So again, as this is a little bit newer, it's important that you see the connection that that's 49 and that's 4, and that's how you get the 53. Okay, That one you need to kind of pause and think about more, or in the second half of this video, I'm, I'm imagining more people would need to kind of think about these a little bit longer. Feel free to pause whenever. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I do it all the time when I'm learning and reviewing other things. Um, let's see here. Hmm. Okay, so while we're dealing with just, just positives, I do wanna bring up something else that you could potentially do. And this didn't really come up in other, any previous problems, but I want you to just be aware of this going forward, is if the three terms you have have a GCF other than one, uh, you can totally factor that out so you have smaller numbers to deal with. So if you look at this nine, that has factors of one and nine, three and three. 21 also has more than two factors, so one and 21, three and seven. So if you, if you notice though that all of these are divisible by three, then it might be a good idea just to factor that out. So you have to deal with smaller numbers, right? So if you factor out a three, three times three X squared gets you nine X squared, three times 22 X gets you 66 X, and three times seven gets you 21. 
Now, why would you do that? Well, you just notice here that we, it actually kind of just boils things down. So uh, leave the three on the outside, just ignore it for a little bit. Um, and that we only have two options, or we only have one option really, it's just three and one, okay? And for seven, seven's prime, so it's gotta be seven and one. So this completely uh, negates the issue of maybe, you know, not being correct on your first try, because this is gonna be 21 and this is going to be one. So 21 plus one is 22 and we have the three on the outside. So how are we gonna write our answer? Well, we just take this three and we bring it on down and we go ahead and set up our binomials. Nothing changes really, we just have a three on the outside. Three X goes here, one X goes here. The three X pairs with a seven, so those are outers and here are the inners. So there are the outers, there are the inners and the three is just on the outside. This is completely factored. So if you have a common factor, always factor it out. It makes things a little bit easier and it's more proper in any way to have all the, all the factors completely factored out. Okay, so that three wasn't common, just pull it on out. Uh, 56, let's see if we can fit one more on here. 56, let's go with six X squared and then plus 36, uh, plus 37 X rather, uh, plus six. So. GCF is one, they're relatively prime, can't do anything here. That's good because it's less work <laughs> for us. Um, the only annoying thing here is that, you know, this could be six and one, it could be three and two. Hmm. Now, I'm, I guess I'm gonna go with six and one, and maybe you can, you can see why. Um, I'm just looking and thinking ahead just a little bit here. We need to get to 37, right? So if we were to pair these up across, this would be 36 and this would be one. So just thinking ahead, obviously you could try three and two, three and two, it's not gonna work, but I just noticed that we do have two sixes and six times six is 36 and plus the one. So uh, if you notice that, you know, great. If you, if you tried three and two and three and two or some other combination, you're gonna notice it's not going to work, but there's something really bad. It just, you just have to try it maybe another time or two. So, um, so far I haven't run into that issue where we had to try it a second time but um, maybe I'll try to show that in, in a future one. Like, I mean, still have 44 more examples <laughs> to kind of go through, so I'm, I'm sure I'll have some time to kind of go over some of those, okay? Um, all right, let's keep, it, let's keep it going. Again, these the second 50 are a little bit more frustrating to deal with, so uh, let's just, just try, to, try to hang with me and, and digest this. And as, as we practice, I promise they, they'll get better as we go, so. 57, let's do 10x squared plus 31x plus 15. All right, you got this. Uh, annoying, 10's not prime, 15's not prime, but no GCF, okay. So I'm gonna go with five and two. Be my guess to try 10 and one, it might work, I don't know. Um, and for 15, I'm going to try five and three, okay? so. If we were to go across, that's 25 and six. Oh, lovely. All right, so I guess, you know, I'm, I've done these so many times that my instincts are, are serving me well here. There's something to say about experience. It does help out. I just have, a, I guess, a sense for some of these. Uh, 5X and 2X, five pairs with five. So that goes on the outers, and those are gonna pair on the inners. So that's gonna be 25 and six, which gets us 31, okay? Uh, 58, 58, let's go with eight X squared. Okay, it's a composite number, so it could be a few different things. Uh, plus 16 X, okay, just notice they have a common factor of eight so far. Plus six, okay, eight doesn't work, but two is a common factor, so let's pull out a two. Let's make these numbers a little smaller, so we'll pull out a two here and they'll have four X squared plus eight X plus three. And that's kind of nice because three's prime, okay? So if three's prime, we have less options to think about. So four, what should we do? Two and two or three and, two and two or four and one? I don't know. Let's try two and two. And for three, we really only can do three and one. Uh, let's see here, uh, this is six and two. Oh, that does work. <laughs> All right, cool. So that's gonna be six X and that's going to be two X, that's gonna be eight X. So for our answer here, we'll put, or factored version, which is I guess our answer, uh, we'll put the two on the outside, don't forget about it. 
and we'll put 2x and 2x plus 3 on the outside plus 1 on the inside. I guess it didn't matter because both were 2x so you could have mixed them up by accident and still accidentally got it correct. But 6 and 2 make 8. Yeah, everything seems to work out. Awesome. That's 58. Let's go with 59. 59. Let's try slightly larger coefficients. Do 21x squared plus 22x and then plus 5. Uh, no GCF, or I mean the GCF is 1. I shouldn't say there's no GCF. There's always a GCF. Uh, 7 and 3 maybe. I don't think it's going to be 21 and 1, but it could be. Uh, 5 is prime, thank goodness. 5 and 1. If we go across, oh man, that's nice. 15 and 7, 22, I love it. All right, cool, so we'll go ahead and put 3x and 7x. And we can also write plus 5 on the outside and plus 1 on the inside. Here we see 15, and then we have 7, 15 and 7 is 22. So good to go. 60. Last one with all positives, with a leading coefficient of not 1. So let's try 12x squared plus 29x. I think I used 29 recently. Maybe not. Uh, maybe it was 19. Um, plus 15. Okay, so GCF is 1. Can't factor anything out. Um, I'm thinking, I don't know, 4 and 3? Let's try 4 and 3. We haven't run into that issue of not working yet, so let's try 5 and 3. And yeah, okay, this one works again. That's 20 and 9. I'm doing a bad job of showing you ones where it doesn't work out nicely. So uh, I'll, 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 I think we will have some in a little bit. It's easier when they're all positive, uh, and I think I'm kind of doing them ahead in my head, so then I'm getting them on the first try. But uh, when we get to, ne get to negatives, it's, it's not as easy to do, so. Um, that and that, and then these are on the outer, and these are on the inner. The outer, we're looking at positive 20. On the inner, we have nine, that's 29. All right, 60 down, 40 to go. Let's start throwing in some negatives. Uh, again, we won't, we, won't, we won't go too complicated, but uh, when we get to, I guess, after 70, um, it, gets, it gets a little bit more um, thought-provoking just because we have a lot more negatives and coefficients that to, to deal with and more possibilities. So on to 61. 61, let's bring in some negatives, but not too many. 61, let's try 3x squared and then minus 8x and then plus 4. So some negatives in, but some not as bad coefficients. So I'm trying to meet you halfway here uh, and just kind of help you progress. So let's go with 3 and 1. And now we need negatives. We need two negatives because of this negative 8 in the middle. So I'm thinking, should I go 2 and 2 or 4 and 1? I'll go 2 and 2. And they both have to be negative, so let's throw those negatives on. Uh, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 6, whoopsies. Negative six and negative two do make negative eight. So go ahead and plop those in the right spot. Three X and one X. Let's put a little minus two and minus two. Just double check, that's negative six and that's negative two. That does make negative eight. Awesome, 62. Let's try five X squared minus 18 X and do a plus nine. So five's prime, sweet. Nine is not, but there's not too many options. I guess let's try negative three and negative three. Does make negative nine. That's negative 15, negative three, negative 15, negative three, do make negative 18. Not bad, five X and X. I guess we could have mixed these up too, just because we have two negative three, so it wouldn't have mattered. But you'd rather get in a good habit. Don't accidentally get it right. Make sure you're getting it right for the right reasons and you understand why. 63. Let's try four x squared minus 35x 
and plus 49. Okay, so let's go with two numbers. I'll go with two and two, and we can go with maybe negative seven and negative seven. I'm thinking, I don't know, I'm just choosing, I'm using my same philosophy of saying choose the ones closest together, and if they're perfect squares, they're perfect squares. So uh, this is definitely not gonna work though. Let's see, two times negative seven is negative 14. That's also negative 14. So negative 14 and negative 14 make negative 28, which is not negative 35. So I'm actually kind of glad this didn't work out finally. Uh, so I can show you what to do. So if this doesn't work out, you have two options, right? You can either change these values uh, to different factors, or you can change these values. So you have two options, really. For 49, you could either go with 49 and 1, or you can, I guess, stick with 7 and 7. Uh, here, we can stick with the 2 and 2 or go to 4 and 1. Now, I don't want to make too big of a change because when we did multiply these out, we got 14 and 14 to get 28. That's not that far from negative 35. So I don't want to make too drastic of a change. I think changing seven and seven to 49 and one is a much more drastic change. I'm going to choose four and one. Let's see how this plays out. That's going to be negative 28 and negative seven. And if you add those, you do get negative 35. Okay, so again, uh, it's going to take a bit of adjusting. Um, if you've been getting them incorrect the first time, then you're maybe more used to it. But it just takes some practice and just don't don't give up. Um, just stick with it, right? It, it's always going to get better. I promise I'm going to go through with you all the way to 100. So stick with me uh, and uh, you'll, you'll be okay. All right. Um, I'm, I, won't, I won't stop. So I'll be here and you can always replay me, replay this video if you need some, some little bit of extra help. And this works. 63, let's go 64. Hands getting a little tired. Let's see. 4x squared minus 17x plus 4. Okay, GCF is 1, can't factor anything out. Um, oh, I'm thinking 4 and 1 and 4 and 1 actually. Just because four times four is 16 and with the extra one, we can get to 17. So I just like noticing these little things. Um, I just noticed I forgot negative. So let's put those negatives on to get to negative 17, right? So we need negative 17, not positive 17. And then go ahead and throw some parentheses on. I'll put a four X and a normal X or just a one X because it's not normal or not normal. And let's just double check this on the outers. These will multiply, that's negative 16 and, whoops, positive one, negative one. <laughs> negative 16, negative one is negative 17. Sorry about that. So that's 64. All right, it's time for 65. 65. For 65, let's try six x squared minus 23x plus 20. Okay, so I don't know, we'll start with three and two and go from there and see if it works or doesn't work. Uh, for positive 20, I guess we'll go with five and four. We'll go negative, negative. And if I go across, that's going to be 15. If I go across, that's gonna be eight. Let's see, I think that works, right? Negative 15 and negative eight. 15 and 8 make 23. So that sounds like a plan. Let's go with 3x and 2x. Let's go with minus 5 and minus 4. So these make negative 15. These make negative 8. That is negative 23. 66. Let's try 4x squared minus 33x, minus 33x, and plus 35. Four, let's go with two and two. And for 35, we need two negatives because we have negative 33. Uh, the thing two in the middle would be negative seven, negative five. If we said this, this would be negative 14 and negative 10. That's negative 24, so that's no good. And if we go diagonal, that also doesn't change anything because the twos are still the same twos. So I guess I'll change the two and two. Let's, let's try four and one. And before I write anything for certain, that'll be negative 28 
negative 5. Negative 28 and negative 5 make negative 33. Okay, so I'm good with this now. Um, let's pair those and pair those. Not too bad. Uh, 4x and x. Let's put a minus 7 and a minus 5. And here is the negative 28 and negative 5. But they do make negative 33, so that is good. 67. Let's try 18x squared. Minus 39x, minus 39x, plus 20. Okay. Uh, 18, uh, let's see, 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6. Let's go with 3 and 6. Got to practice what I preach. I said let's start with the middle ones. And 5 and 4 make 20. Again, I'm just arbitrarily putting these in, and then if I need to adjust, I will. Uh, let's see, this is going to be 15 and 24. Negative 15, negative 24. Whew. That's nice. That's negative 15. That's negative 24, that does make negative 39. So first try, and that one was a little bit risky, I was thinking, <laughs> just because they were both composite numbers and it could have been other stuff, but so far lucking out with this strategy, minus five, minus four. This is gonna be negative 15, negative 24, that's negative 39, cool. 68. Let's try 12x squared, 12x squared, minus 32x, plus 16. Okay, so all even numbers, and actually I think they're divisible by 4. So if I pull out their GCF, this should make our lives a little bit easier in terms of factoring. Uh, 4 times 3x squared, and then minus 8x, and then plus 4. So what I like about this is now we have a prime number, so three and one, we don't have to wonder if we're gonna get it on the first try, it'll be correct. And four, we could do four and one or two and two. I'll use negative two and negative two. That gets negative six and negative two, which do make negative eight. So writing our final factored form, everything will be relatively prime if we factor it out. The four, and I'll put a three x and an x. And this is kind of nice. We'll put the minus two and minus two. They're both the same, so uh, the minus twos don't really matter which one. Don't worry about mixing up the negative twos, okay? And there's 65 to 68. Uh, let's uh, keep on going here. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna shake out my hand a little bit here. 68, that means we'll keep on going with 69 and 70 will be the last two of the section, so 69 69, I'll say, is going to be 10x squared minus 11x plus 3. Okay, so for 10x squared, I will go with a 5 and a 2. And for this positive 3, that's prime. We need two negatives, though. I'll go with negative 3 and negative 1. Okay, uh, if I go across here, that's going to be negative 15 and negative 2. That makes negative 17. That's not what we want. But if I go diagonal, that's negative 5 and negative 6, and those do add to get to negative 11. So I'll pair these as my outers, I guess, and pair these as my inners. Again, it's up to you. Uh, it doesn't really matter because you'll be adding them anyway. So I'll pair up the 5x and 2x, but the 5x has to go with the negative 1. And whoopsies, I've been using that color. So negative 1 and negative 3. So this is going to be the negative 5x. This will be negative 6x, that's negative 11x. All right, 70. Last one of this section, and then things are going to get a little bit more. Uh, Got to think a little bit more. So let's try 15x squared minus 38x plus 24. GCF is 1, so we can't do anything there. For 15, let's go with 5 and 3, and then go from there. Uh, for 24, I think four and six are the closest things, so we need two negatives because we have negative 38. Um, oh, this does work. <laughs> this is negative 20 and negative 18. 20 and 18 make 38, so that does work out nicely. So I guess, yeah, maybe when you're doing these, try, <laughs> try choosing the middle numbers. It's just what I've always done myself, and then 
kind of worked out. So minus six, minus four. Let's see again, one more time, just to double check I didn't make anything, uh, make any silly mistakes. It's negative 20, negative 18, that's negative 38. All right, 71, last 30 questions. And as we go ahead on these 30 questions, I'll throw in more negatives with a negative value at the end. So for 71, let's try 3x squared minus 2x minus 5. All right, so for 3, 3 is prime. That's nice. We'll just do 3 and 1. But for this negative 5, we don't know which one to put the negative on. So if I were you, I would just put it on one of them. And if we need to adjust, then we can just move it to the other. Not a big deal. Now, if we go to, uh, across, rather, 3 times negative 5, that's negative 15. 1 times 1 is positive 1. Negative 15 and 1 make negative 14. So that's not what we want. If we go diagonal, that's positive 3 and negative 5. And that does equal negative 2 because 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Now, if your sign was flipped and you got positive 2 and you wanted a negative 2, then all you really have to do is just move this negative and move it to the 1 instead. So easy fix, uh, just a little bit of writing. But it seems like we found it out that this is going to be our outers for me. And these will be our inners. Okay, so setting this up, I'll put the 3x and a normal x. 3 goes with 1, so positive 1, and negative 5 goes with the other on the inside. So that's 3, that's minus 5, that does get you negative 2 on the inside. All right, so 72. Let's try 15x squared minus 27x minus x. Okay, um, I do notice, uh, or maybe you can see if you notice, that there's a GCF other than one. Um, three seems to be the number that they all have in common as a factor. So while we're factoring, uh, keep in mind your GCF factoring. Um, this will give us a prime coefficient, which is nice. Uh, five, and this will be a minus two, and two's prime. Okay, sweet. Now for this five, let's go with five and one. And for this negative two, I'll put a two and a one. And I don't know, I just, I'm just gonna put the negative on the negative one just to see what happens here. If we go across, this is gonna be 10 and negative one. So that's positive nine, but we want a negative nine. So uh, I, I should have just put the negative on the top one then. But you know, if, if it's not one, it's the other. So you know, try not to be too upset about it. So this is negative 10 and positive one. So negative 10, positive one, that's negative nine. So that does work out and that's all you need to do. Slight adjustment, right? I guess you can really call this whole method like a guess and check, but like a fast guess and check. Uh, I think it's, it's overall, it's pretty efficient. Um, some people don't like it because they want to know they'll get it right on the first try every time, and I, you can't really guarantee that. Um, but you can be pretty accurate once you once you practice a lot. So uh, negative 10, positive 1. Yeah, I think we're good. Let's move on to 73. Keep in mind that like, you know, you're gonna practice this a lot regardless because you have to factor in algebra one and algebra two. A lot of geometry classes have it in there as well. And pre-calc and calc all has some factoring in some capacity as well. So you're gonna see it um, and you will practice it. So it'll get better. Minus 15 X minus 25. Okay, so no, no uh, common factors besides one. So I'm gonna go with uh, I'll go with two and two. And for 25, let's go with five and five. And one has to be negative, it doesn't really matter. So if we pair this up, um, this is negative 10 and positive 10. That makes zero, so that's no good. Uh, the twos are the same, so if you go this way, you're still gonna get zero, that's not gonna change anything. So um, I don't know, just, I think what, I, what worked for me before was choosing four and one. So I'm gonna try four and one. So that's negative 20 and positive five. That does equal negative 15. All right. Not too bad, second try. Um, let's go ahead and just go ahead, set these up. Four X and X minus five plus five pair on the inside. Sorry, that's the outside, <laughs> this is the inside. I'm fading, I'm fading, gotta, gotta stay strong for just a few more. 74, 74, let's try 6x squared minus 11x minus 10. 
Okay, so, so la, 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 let's see, three and two, uh, five and two. I think those are the closest ones we can go with. Let's just throw a negative on the top one. Seemed like that was what I wanted before anyway. 15, negative 15 and positive four. Negative 15 plus four is negative 11. Ah, wonderful. I like that. So negative 15 plus four, negative 11. That's not too bad, right? Let's see, 3x, 2x, the outers are here, the inners are here. If you don't see a sign, it's positive. If you see a negative, then it is negative. Wonderful, 75. We're making moves, doing a good job. Keep up the good work. Keep up the good work. Let's go with 75 and maybe, hmm. We can go with 15x squared. 15x squared minus 6x and minus 9. Should we start factoring? I don't know. Maybe yes, maybe no. I see a common factor. Do you? Um, I see a 3, so I'm going to factor that out. 3. Let's go with 5x squared minus 2x and then minus 3. Everything's prime inside. Look at that. 5. That has to be 5 and 1. This negative three, this must be three and one, no choice. Oh, that's kind of nice. I'll put the negative on the top one. That's where I've been having the best luck. Uh, negative 15, <laughs> as soon as I said it, negative 15 and positive one, that's negative 14, that's no good. Um, positive five and negative three, that makes positive two, but we want a negative two. All right, I get it, I get it. Let's put the negative over here. And this, this gets us a negative five, right? A negative five and a positive three. So negative five and positive three, that makes negative two. Okay, so it took a couple tries, but we got it. Not too bad. Three on the outside, don't forget about it. It's part of the problem too, don't leave it out. Let's be nice. And the five was going with the minus one and the one was going with the plus three. So a little more thinking. Just, just stay on top of that. Keep all your things organized. I'm trying to keep things color coded for you. Help you, help you keep things nice and organized. 76. 76. Let's try 8x squared minus 6x minus 35. All right, so 8x squared, let's go with a 4 and a 2. Those are the closest ones I can find. For negative 35, I'll go with 7 and 5, and I'll just start with the negative on top. So this is going to be negative 28 plus 10. That's negative 18. That's no good. We want negative 6. That's going to be positive 20 minus 14. 20 minus 14, that's positive six. We want negative six, so easy fix. Swap the negative down here, and this will be negative 20, and this will be positive 14. So that'll be negative six. Cool, we got what we need, so set it up. Put our coefficients, four x, two x. The four has to pair with a minus five, and that one pairs with this so that's that and that's that alrighty there's 73 to 76 on to 77 77 20x squared oh, that has more factors I don't like that minus 9x minus 18 Okay, no common factors besides one. I guess I'll start with a four and a five. And for this one, I need to know one positive, one negative, and six and three, I think, are the closest factors here. And one has to be negative. I'll just start with the top one as usual. Um, let's go with this. That's negative 24, and five times three is 15. So what's negative 24 plus 15? It's negative still, and oh, it's negative nine. How convenient, first try. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the four X and the five X. The four X pairs with a minus six and the five X pairs with a plus three. So 
This is the outers, negative 24 plus 15. They're nine apart, 24 is more negative than 15 is positive, so it stays in the negative. Okay, 78, let's try 6x squared minus 4x minus 10. Okay, GCF is two. Let's pull out the GCF of two and we end up with 3x squared minus 2x and minus 5. Ooh, prime, that's 3 and 1. Another prime, that's 5 and 1. I'll put the negative here for now. And if I go across, though, that's negative 15 and positive 1. No good. Um, that's positive 3 and negative 5. Positive 3, negative 5, that is negative 2. So I like the diagonals. We'll take this. And we'll take this, and let's put the two in our answer. Open up the binomials. We have four things to put in. Two of them are always kind of told to us. Those go first. Once you get the third one, everything else kind of fits into place. So three goes with one. That means negative five must go here. So that goes, and that goes. I think we're good. 79. Moving right along. 79. Let's go with 21x squared minus x minus 36. Okay, 21, I'm gonna go with three and seven. And for 36, I guess I'll go with six and six. And I'll make one of them negative since we need to get to negative 36. So uh, that's gonna be negative 18, negative 18. What is this, positive 42? That's definitely not gonna get us negative one. Um, if I go here, that's positive 18 and negative 42. That's not gonna work either. So, um, hmm. I could change the three and seven to a 21 and one. I can show you what that looks like. I have a feeling it's not gonna be it though, just because that's so far apart. That's like, yeah, <laughs> like see, this is negative 126 and there's no way that's gonna work. This is positive 126. Okay, so uh, when you see that like they're very far apart, like I wouldn't I wouldn't touch them too much. I think that's not the best plan to do. Uh, so maybe we'll change this instead of six and six. I'll try nine and four. Nine and four. Um, I don't like this. That's negative 63 and positive 12. That's still negative 50 something. So if we go diagonal, this is 28 and negative 27. That adds to get positive one. We want negative one. Okay, easy fix. Let's just swap the negative down here. And we can still go diagonal though, right? Um, so this will be uh, negative 28. And this one will be positive 27. So negative 28 and positive 27, that still equals negative one. So this one took a little bit more. Um, the numbers are bigger, more factors, more things to think about. Um, but that's a thought process you kind of want to have. These go here, seven goes with negative four. That's here, positive nine, negative 28, positive 27 still nets you a negative one X for the middle term. So still works out. All right, number 80. We have here, let's try 12 X squared minus two X minus 30. GCF right away is two. Um, that's common factor and we see a two so we can't go any smaller. So that's gonna be six X squared minus X minus 15. Six, let's go with three and two. 15, I'm gonna go with five and three and I'm gonna throw the negative on the first one. Negative 15 and positive six, that makes negative nine. I don't like that. This is three times three is nine, two times negative five is negative 10. Nine and negative 10 do get you negative one, which is what we do have here. So I like that. Let's go with positive nine and negative 10. And I think that's everything we need. So the two's on the outside, just hanging out. Don't forget about it. It's part of the problem. Um, when you do equations later, we can kind of ignore it for other reasons, but we'll get into that in another video maybe. Three, goes with three, two goes with negative five. Double check, positive nine, negative 10 makes negative one. Yeah, checks out. Alrighty, 20 more problems to go. So let's go on to 81. 
for 81, let's see, we have 15x squared plus 11x minus 12. Okay, so for this 15, let's go with 5 and 3. Okay, and for this negative 12, uh, well, we need to need have one positive, one negative. I'll go with 4 and 3, and let's just snack. Uh, snack i just slap that negative <laughs> negative on the four or stick it over there uh and this is what negative 20 and positive nine negative 20 plus nine that's negative 11. we want positive 11. oh let's <laughs> put it over here then let's snack it over there slap it over there i can tell i'm hungry i guess uh that's that and that's that 20 and negative nine that's positive 11. all right i think we're good Go ahead and open up these 5x, 3x, 5 goes with 4, 3 goes with negative 3. Perfect. Good, good, and onward. 82. Let's see, we have 2x squared plus 3x minus 90. So these, well, okay, that's just two and one. And let's, what numbers are close here? Oh, nine and 10, let's go with nine and 10. And I'll just put the negative here, just cause I don't know what else to do. That's gonna be negative 18 and positive 10. That adds up to get negative eight, that's no good. This is positive 20 minus nine, that's positive 11, that's also no good. So let's swap out this nine and 10 and let's try two more numbers. I don't really like 90 and one, they're too far apart. They should only really, we need to get to three, right? That's not, it's not a very big number. Uh, 45 and two are also pretty far apart. 30 and three also, um, we did 15 and six way earlier. 15 and six maybe, I don't know. I, I, re I really don't know. So let's do 15 and six and put that in there. there. That's negative 30 and positive six. I don't really like that. Uh, oh, okay, so positive 12 and negative 15. That gets you negative three. Okay, perfect. So um, we just move the negative over here and we pair this up as negative 12 and positive 15. It does get us negative, positive three, positive three, sorry. Uh, and that's what we're looking for, so. Wonderful, so let's just put this 2x and x. Two goes with the negative six, that goes over here, and the 15's gotta go here. So let's pair this up, that's negative 12 and positive 15, that's positive three. Okay, wonderful, so 83. 21x squared, let's give this a try, plus x minus 10. Okay, so 21, not too many factors. I'll go with three and seven. And for this negative 10, let's go with five and two. I'll put the negative on the top one just to start. Uh, negative 15 and positive 14. Oh, that makes negative one. So let's just move the negative on down to here. And so this is positive 15 negative 14, so 15 minus 14 is one, so that works nicely. Three x, seven x, three goes with five. That's the outers and the inners. Outers, inners, good. 84, 84, let's go with 10 x squared plus 9x, minus 9. Okay, um, for this 10, I don't know, 5 and 2 seem like a good place to start. For the 9, we'll go with negative 3 and 3. That's negative 15, and that's positive 6. Negative 15 plus 6 is negative 9. We want a positive 9, so I guess we could move the negative, but I think a little bit easier is why not just pair this with a positive three since they have the same absolute value. They're just opposites, right? So that's 15 minus six, a little hack there. No need to change the negative if they're both the same number. You can change it that way. So five X and two X, the five has to go with the positive three. So just make sure you are careful with that. Good, 
I'm good. Cool. Uh, that's 81 to 84. Getting closer. All right, so 85. Um, going on here, we have 4x squared plus 2x and minus 20. Okay, so it looks like they have a GCF of two. I'll pull that on out and we're left with two x squared plus just one x and then minus 10. And I think can't do anything else, right? And then factoring this, let's say two and one and factors of 10, let's go with five and two, but I'll throw a negative here. Negative 10, positive two, that's no good positive four and negative five, that's negative one. We want positive one, so move the negative, and I think this is what we're looking for. Negative four and positive five does make positive one. All right, so we can do two and open up our binomials, our parentheses, two x pairs with negative two and one x pairs with positive five. Perfect and perfect. 86. 86, let's try 30x squared plus 13x minus 10. Uh, no GCF that I can see besides one, so let's start off with 30 and go six and five. Those are the two closest factors I can think of. For 10, um, we just did in the last problem, do five and two, put the negative here for now. That's gonna be negative 30 plus 10, that's negative 20, okay. That's gonna be 12, positive 12, negative 25. 12 minus 25 is negative 13. We want positive 13, so move the negative over to here. Let's just see it one more time. Positive 25 minus 12. 25 minus 12 is 13, so I think that's what we're looking for. Put the 6x and 5x, 6 goes with negative 2, 6, negative 2 over here, and we'll put a plus 5, so that's going to be negative 12x plus 25 is positive 13x, okay, 87, 87, let's try 6x squared plus 13x minus 15. Um, 13's prime, so nothing nothing good to look at over there. Let's go with three and two, and for this minus 15, I'm gonna go with five and three. I'll put the negative up here. That's negative 15 plus six. It's definitely not positive 13, right? Um, then go with positive nine minus 10. That's also not going to work. Uh, I don't know, we, we can choose which one we wanna switch up here. Um, I'm gonna try the six and one. Six and one, let's go, that's negative 30 and positive three, that's negative 27. Okay, that didn't help. Uh, positive 18, positive 18 minus five. 18 minus five is 13, okay, cool. I like this one, so this one, whoops, this one pairs with this one, and these two pair as well. Six X and one X, one X, six pairs with a three, we'll put that here, and the one pairs with a minus five. So I think this does work out, just double checking, that's positive 18, 18 minus five is 13. Okay, uh, 88, let's try 24 X squared plus three X minus 21. For 24, let's try six and four. They're pretty close to each other. For 21, let's try seven and three. I'll put the negative over here. That'll be negative 42 and positive 12. I think that makes negative 30. That's nowhere close. Uh, this is 18, 18 and negative 28. Negative 28 plus 18. That's negative 10, that's also not anywhere where we are looking for. Okay, um, instead of six and four, let's try eight and three. Eight and three. Okay, I don't really like the 56 thing going on here. Negative 56 plus nine, it's still negative 
a lot. <laughs> uh, negative a lot. And uh, negative, this is what, 24? Okay, 8 times 3 is 24. 3 times 7 is 21. Negative 21. 24 minus 21 is 3. Okay. All right, this is better. Positive 24. Negative 21, that's positive 3. All right, that was the hard part. I'll just put these in the right spots. X's go first. 8 goes with 3. Those are the outers. And those are the inners. Outers, inners. Cool. That's 85 to 88. Let's go to 89. 89. Let's see. For 89, let's try 18x squared plus 3x minus 45. What do you guys think? Um, GCF of 3? Three? 3? Three, does that sound good? I think 3 goes into all of these. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times 1 is 3. And then 3 times 15 is 45. Okay. Uh, six still isn't prime, but it's definitely smaller, less options. I'm going to put a two and a three. And for negative 15, let's go with five and three. I'll put a negative on one of them. That's negative 10 and positive nine. That makes negative one. We want positive one. So just switch the negative over. That's positive 10 minus nine is positive one. So as we write this, bring out, bring down our three that is on the outside. It's common to everything. And then we have a 2x and 3x, two pairs with 5 on the outers. And we have a negative 3 on the inners. Okay. And let's go with 90. Question 90. I can't believe I've done this many of these. I've never done this many problems in a row. I don't think. I've never done 100 quadratics in a row at least. Plus 23x minus 28 in one sitting. Uh, here, let's go with five and three, and seven and four. Okay, let's just test these out. So this is what, negative 35 plus 12? Negative 35 plus 12 is negative 23. Oh, okay, that was an, a pretty ideal first first go. This is what positive 35, 35 minus 12, that's 23. So cool. I like that one. Five pairs with seven pairs with that. 35 minus 12 is 23. Alrighty. Final 10 countdown. <laughs> Uh, 91. Let's do some that have some different signs, just kind of all mixed up together. So let's do 10x squared minus 11x minus 6. So for 10, let's go with 5 and 2. And for negative 6, I'm going to go with 3 and 2 and put the negative here. So that's negative 15 plus 4. Bingo. Love it. That's negative 15. 15 and then plus 4, that makes negative 11. I like it. 5x and 2x, 5 pairs with negative 3, 2 pairs with positive 2. Negative 15 and positive 4 make negative 11. All right, good start to the last 10. Nine more. 92. We have 12x squared plus 17x minus 5. Now for this 12, let's go with four and three. They're pretty close to each other. For this negative five, I'm gonna go with five and one and put the negative over here. Um, oh my goodness, <laughs> first try. Nope, not first try, sorry about that. That's negative 20 plus three, that's negative 17. I was still happy with it though. It's, it's a very minor adjustment we have to make. Positive 20 minus three is gonna be positive 17. So we go ahead and set these up. We got four X and three X, four X pairs with five, that goes on the outers and the inners, we have a minus one. So here we have positive 20 minus three is 17. 
Alrighty, that's 92. Um, let's check out 93. Seven more, I think. I can't count anymore. So let's say 35x squared minus 29x plus 6. Okay, let's go with 7 and 5. That sounds like a good plan, right? And we need two negatives because we have a negative 29, but we have a positive 6. So I'll start with negative 3 and negative 2. That's negative 30 or neg <laughs> negative 21 and negative 10. That's negative 31. Okay, not good. Uh, negative 14 and negative 15. Negative 14 and negative 15. I think that is what we're looking for. So second try. Can't complain about that because now we have everything we need. 7x and 5x. 7 goes with negative 2. 5 goes with negative 3. Does this work? Yeah, negative 14, negative 15. Everything else checks out. 94. Now it's 7 more? <laughs> I think it's now it's 7 more. I think I said 7 more last time. I meant 8 more. 94. Let's go with 10x squared plus 32x plus 24. GCF of 2. Did you see it? Did you see it? Did you see it? Um, again, it's not, it's not the end of the world if you don't, if you don't see it. <laughs> you can always just factor it out later. Um, but this gives us less combinations to work with. Five's prime now, right? So you don't have to guess. It's just five and one. Everything's positive here, which I love. That's three and four. Um, let's try this out. That's 15 and 4. That's 19. I don't like that. That's 20 and 3. That's 23. I don't like that. Uh, let's scratch the 3 and 4. The 5 and 1 has to stay the same because it's prime. For 6 and 2, let's see here. Uh, this is no good. That's 32. Uh, this is 10 and 6, which is 16. Okay. Here's the 10. Here's the 6. That's 16. So we have 2 times the quantity of, we have a 5x and a normal x. The 5 goes with 2, and the normal x goes with 6. Alrighty, 95. Let's go with 6x squared minus 25x plus 24. Okay, no GCF other than one. Let's go with a three and a two. We need two negatives to get a positive 24, to add to get to negative. I'll start with negative four and negative six. It's negative 12, and that's negative 12. That's negative 24. It's close, but not quite. That's negative 18 and negative eight, negative 26. Is that for real? We're missing on both ends. I guess it has to be, we need some odd number, uh, but this isn't working out for us just yet. Uh, I kind of want to leave the three and two alone. So maybe I'll mix this up and try the three and the eight. Let's see how this works. This is nine. There's an odd number, nine and 16, negative nine, negative 16, make negative 25. Oh, cool. So we needed a negative or uh, I mean an odd number. So I think that's what, that's why I thought that way at least. Um, okay, let's plug these in, 3x and 2x, and 3x is pairing with a minus 3, and the 2x is pairing with a minus 8. Showing that right here, that's negative 9, negative 16, 16 plus 9 is 25. Beautiful. Almost there, 96, I think 96, yes, five more problems, 96. Let's go with 8x squared plus 22x minus 21. Okay, so for the 8, let's go with 4 and 2. And for 21, and you can choose other numbers and see if it works for you. Um, let's go with 7 and 3. We'll eventually get at the right spot. 28 and 6. Negative 28, positive 6, that's negative 22. I don't mind it. Easy fix. Positive 28, 
minus 6 is positive 22. Okay, so let's go ahead and put 4x and 2x. 4 goes with 7 on the outers. And we'll put that on the inners. Go ahead, 28 minus 6 is 22. Alrighty, last four problems. Let's go on to 97. Last time erasing, 97. Can't believe we made it. 97, let's go with 27x squared plus 51x minus 56. Okay, so uh, right here, 9 and 3 is what I'll go with for 27. And for this 56, I'm going to go with 7 and 8. Okay, 7 times 8 is 56. And we had to be one negative since 56 is a negative value. Um, if we go here, that's what, negative 63, okay, negative 63, and positive 24. 63 and 24 are not 51 apart, okay. 72, 9 times 8 is 72, 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. 72 and 21, ah, they're 51 apart, thank goodness. <laughs> I didn't really want to do any extra work beyond that, um, I think... That turned out nicely. Okay, cool. Um, let's go ahead and set these up. 9x and 3x. 9 goes with 8. And 3 goes with negative 7. Make sure you put the minus on there. So just seeing them written down, it's a little bit easier to double check. That's 72, right? 72 take away 21. Did I flip my colors? I think I flipped my colors. So the 72 is purple. All right, 72 is purple. Oh man, I was going, I was doing so good. Uh, it's okay, it just shows it doesn't really matter uh, if they're the outers or the inners. So 72 minus 21 equals 51. Yep. All right, 98, last three problems. Thanks for sticking there with me. Um, hopefully this is helpful to you and you're feeling much better about solving or factoring quadratics. If you don't really know why you're doing it yet, um, I'll make another video later on. Just let me know in the comments, uh, or you know, I, I can I can always do that. These really just turn into parabolas, or these represent parabolas, which are very useful in graphing different types of things that are thrown into the air, things like that, soccer balls, basketballs. Negative, negative, to get us a positive. Okay, let's try. This is negative 45 and negative 6. That's negative 51. That's negative 15, negative 18. 15 plus 18 is 33, and that's negative 33. So let's go with that and that. I'm happy because that didn't take as much work as it could have. And let's put a 5x and a 2x. 5 goes with negative 3, and 2 goes with the negative 9. So if we go ahead and pair up, that's going to be negative 15, negative 18, and everything is perfect. Okay, 99. Second to last one. 30x squared plus 9x minus 3. I see a GCF of 3. Let's take that out. Let's make these numbers a little smaller. 10x squared plus 3x minus 1. And if we see 10, we can go with a 5 and a 2. And for this negative 1, oh, that's nice. Let's go with negative 1 and 1. That's going to be negative 5 and positive 2. That adds together to get negative 3. We want positive 3. So let's not worry about switching the negative because we have a 1 and a negative 1, so that solves that issue. 5 minus 2 is 3, so I think that is good. So we'll put a 3 on the outside, and we'll create two of our binomials. And we can put this 5x and 2x. 5 goes with positive 1, and the 2 goes with a minus 1. Okay, so we can see finally here that that's 5x and this is minus two, which gets us three x. Oops, this is minus two. 
OCD about the shade of purple. <laughs> All right, last one. We made it, guys. <laughs> we made it, everybody. So we have 45x squared minus 39x plus 6. I don't know if you can hear a dog barking in the background. But if you can, I apologize. Um, let's see. Common factor of three? I think so. Three is a common factor. Three times 15 is going to be 45 x squared. Three times 13 gets you 39, and three times two gets you six. So we'll go with that. And for 15, let's have a five and a three. And for two, we need uh, two negative numbers, and it's prime. We need two negative numbers just because this is a negative value. Okay, just keep that in mind. Keep your keep your signs in check. And if we go across here, that's going to be negative 10 and negative 3. Oh my gosh, thank goodness on the last one. I don't have to do this a second time. So negative 10, negative 3, make negative 13. I think we have almost made it. We have made it. Put the 5x and 3x. 5 and put a minus 2 and a minus 1. And does this work out? Yep, negative 10, negative 3. And that's it. There, <laughs> I don't know why I decided to do this. I just I just did, I guess. Uh, it's, it's spring break, and I thought this might be helpful if anybody is learning how to factor quadratics. Uh, again, no one's ever taught me how to do this in school. I learned this from somebody outside of school when I was in, I think, middle school or high school. Uh, and I've used it ever since. It's never really let me down. Um, these are 100 different trinomials that are factorable. There are trinomials that are not factorable. They're prime or they're not factorable. And that's where you would use different strategies like the quadratic formula or completing the square or um, I forget some other ones, solving by square roots. There, there's a few different ones out there. Uh, but uh, factor by grouping, I think that's for trinomials though. Um, but you, you can do that, I think, with quadratics as well. So um, yes, there's, there's lots of things different out there that you can use, um, but uh, this is typically the quickest way uh, if you can factor, um, and hopefully this was helpful. If you like this strategy, uh, you can comment down below and let me know. Um, if you like this video, if it was helpful, if you thought, you know, you just, you just feel bad that I sat here and did 100 problems in a row and it took uh, a few hours <laughs> to do, um, and if you weren't already aware, I'm trying to monetize this channel uh, and start a nonprofit so that 100% of the proceeds will go towards uh, hiring uh, students of color who may be in rough uh, financial situations. And the money will go to, to hiring them and paying them you know, 15, 20 bucks an hour. And they will be able to uh, work with students that are younger than them. And those students who are younger will receive free tutoring um, at, at the expense of this channel. So hopefully uh, this channel can continue growing. Uh, if you like this content uh, or you just want to support the cause, please share, uh, like, subscribe, all those types of things. It really helps the channel out. And uh, hopefully you feel really good about factoring quadratics. Uh, we, did, we did 100 problems um, and new strategy for you. Okay. Um, so as always, keep up the great work and I will see you in the next one. All right. Take care.